What up, guys? Welcome to my driveway, and thanks for tuning in. We are going to walk through the new Blue Sky uh, 360 Pro, which I've gotten a little bit of time on, and we're going to switch to a different camera angle here. I know it's a little dark because I've got my computer set up in the shade. I was going to try to do this out on the water, um, but with the lockdown, don't really have a good place to go, and even our local pond is like covered in pollen and just looks kind of terrible. So I figured on shore I can... Uh, grab my phone, walk around the boat and answer any questions that you have. I see some people are joining in. Um, you know, let me know if you're having any problems with my audio. It is windy and I am using my Bluetooth audio so that I can be mobile. So if there's something going on, uh, I don't have any way of knowing without you guys commenting and telling me. Uh, my wife's going to help me switch from camera angle to camera angle. So this is something kind of new. We've got uh, multiple things going on and we're in my driveway. Uh, trying to get this done. So I hope everybody's out there uh, staying safe and staying healthy and, and positive and getting through this. Dave says it sounds fine. I appreciate it, Dave. Um, and we'll get started on this. While I'm going through the boat, so I'm going to do a quick walkthrough just to kind of give you a heads up. Um, and maybe that'll answer some questions. But if I don't touch on something or you have any questions whatsoever, whether it's about the 360 Pro or actually about um, the uh, the regular 360 to angler, um, feel free to ask. Uh, we can talk about, you know, ways to rig and all that. Uh, here, Andrew, where am I? I'm in uh, North Carolina here at my house. Um, just starting to turn green everywhere. You see some leaves are still missing on these trees, um, but starting to look good. And, uh, you know, luckily I have a little bit of land I can get outside here and, and uh, enjoy this weather that we're having. So, I'm going to switch camera angles to the big camera that's going to give you a full view of the boat. That's a little better. And then after we kind of go through this, I'm going to carry my cell phone with me and we can switch to that angle. So I'm going to walk over to the boat. So as you guys can see, and again, comment, I'm a little far away from the computer now. So if uh, we're not getting audio, then we can adjust that. Um, but as you can see, I've already got the uh, the mo motor guide. Um, it's the XI3 motor mounted to the bow here, just to kind of show how you can do it. When you get this boat, it's going to just come with this reinforced plate. And what that plate allows you to do is, is mount any kind of motor that you want up here as far as the bow mounted um, motors go. I do like having the uh, anchor um, option with the GPS on the motor guide and you can get that of course with other brands as well but that plate just gives you a nice secure place to mount that uh, i actually have it with the quick release plug and we include a pass through here so that the wires can go through but also there is 12 volt access points there's three there's one here here and here um, i'm going to actually get my wife to switch us over uh, to my other camera here so that i can kind of film up close here thank you um, so you can see these access points. We've got one on each side here, um, and then you've got the pass-through and the other 12-volt access there. So the aluminum plate, again, is just mounted through this front deck uh, to the frame, and that allows you to do that. Um, so that's one big change there uh, between the boats. As we move back, what I really like about this and kind of what I always envisioned in my head when we were launching Blue Sky was the ability to eliminate the foot pedals um, if you didn't need to drive. And I always thought or knew that I would have some type of motor system, whether it be the transom mount or the bow mount and trolling like we have here. Um, so just having that extra space to stand and walk around and land fish on is super awesome. Um, we did change up a little bit here on the um, rod staging. So you actually can just lay them flat and bungee them in place for travel and for staging. Uh, so kind of think about that bass boat up on the bow, how they lay their rods out. Um, that gives you a nice quick way to be able to stage those rods. You can just reach down and bungee them so you're not knocking them in the water. Still have track, obviously, all the way across the front. Nice traction pads. Um, and then you've got the track on either side that's also a handle. Still got the same uh, hatches um, that you can access the hole. So pretty much the hole and frame is pretty much the same. It's more the deck that's changed the boat. The seat is no different, you're just eliminating the steering cables. So it still has the forward and aft adjustment um, and the up and down adjustment. And what I like about the forward and aft adjustment is you can kind of dial in the weight distribution, but also slide it all the way back to give you a lot more standing space here, um, which is where I keep it. Spin this out of the way here. 
underneath it kind of you'll see that the boat does come kind of rigged with this yak power system and a battery box so it doesn't come with a battery um kind of leave that up to you you can choose your battery option if you want to go or whatever but uh, this will fit i think a 27 group or a 24 group size battery um, the box itself and the box actually has total access on either side and that's basically just like a you know, the old school cigarette style plug that you would have in your car um, but that's there and then you've got the control panel um, because you do actually have an additional 12 volt plug back here so you've got four different uh, on and off switches to control each access point um, there's a few spares that uh, we actually have a um, molded in kind of rigging channel down the center of the boat now um, and all those wires are ran in there so they're nice and clean and they stay out of the water uh, and in there, there's some extra plugs that you can access that take this same style cord, if you can see that. Um, and then that way you can add even more electronics uh, if you need to. But I mean, right now you could have a light bulb on the back, you could have your fish finder, um, and still have a couple of USB charging ports or power to, let's say, a GoPro or, or whatever. Um, so lots of access there. Um, you can actually hook stuff up on the outside or on the battery terminals themselves. Um, and then you've got uh, your tester, so you can actually see what your charge is. It looks like I am at um, marginal, which means I'm still at 12 volts. Um, and I'm get, I've got a 27 group battery. I'm getting pretty much all day. It's a 55 pound thrust um, trolling motor, and it is ha does have the remote control. Um, so I, I like that. It comes with a Bluetooth uh, foot pedal. But I, I really like using the remote control because I can actually stand in the seat. Um, again, here's the back uh, rod staging areas. Uh, it's a little bit more open for that grip on your on your rod there, um, so you can use that. And then a little bit of difference um, back here. And again, this is all in the main walkthrough video. If you haven't seen it, we've got it on Jackson's uh, here on Jackson's Facebook page. We've got it on the Blue Sky Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Um, but it does come now with this transom mount. Now there's two push pins on there. Let's press those in. Um, and pull that mount out and it actually will fit on the bow as well because it is uh, symmetrical so if you did want to go with kind of a bow mounted um, troll motor with the uh, you know the hands here, um, you can put that up front and just go as simple as that um, or you can do it on the back um, as you can see it comes with this it's not a rudder um, it's the same system really but without the steering so the reason we added that is when you do have that uh, trolling motor on the bow like we've got here um, the back end tends to want to kind of walk in the wind it's kind of like with a kayak uh, adding a rudder to a longer kayak just to keep it from kind of wind cocking it if you will um, so it keeps the back end more locked in place you can track straighter so when you are moving spot to spot or trying to move down a bank you can keep the boat more parallel uh, to the bank to make it easier to fish that's easily removable if you do decide to go with a transom mount motor. Um, I've actually played around with the idea of putting my Torquedo uh, 1003 travel motor on the back. It's kind of my power motor and the trolling motor on the front. Um, I know it's a bit excessive, but it gets a little more speed out of the Torquedo. Um, and I can cover more ground quickly there. Um, but all you have to do is take this bolt out, um, and you can remove this skeg if you don't need it. Um, of course, you have the power pole mounts. So pretty much, again, the same platform. Um, you know, with a few extra things to allow you to really rig it out for fishing um, if you're not interested in that pedal drive. And the fact that it comes in at $2,999, you're saving some money over the pedal drive version, so you can apply that towards a motor. Um, so it's a really great package. You can add a battery, add whatever motor configuration you want, and get out on the water. Um, Sarah, if you would, my wife's name is Sarah, by the way, um, if you would, if there's some questions for me or some comments, you can post them up. I can see them on my phone. Let's give her a second. Can we add the steering cables back if we wanted to install Torquedo 1103 or something similar? Absolutely. Um, it has all pretty much the same framework as the other seat. Um, as you can see, we even still have this here. Um, so it'd just be a matter of creating a hole um, in the deck to be able to run that cable to the, to the stern and you have to get underneath and, and fasten that cable to make it rigid so that the whole cable doesn't move. Um, but it wouldn't be a lot um, to rig that. And then you would be able to hook it back up to the steering right here, just like before you just want to loosen this a little bit so this could turn a little bit easier. 
Um, but also with the brackets that uh, are out there, um, I believe it's, uh, um, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of his, his company now. Um, it's like a sportsman's, innovative sportsman. Ah, there it is. Um, he's got a really cool package that allow you to, to use that kayak style motor and use the steering that comes with the blue sky. So it'd be easy to add that. All right, what we got next, if that helps. Have any more questions, Sarah? That was the only question. You guys are you guys are good if you guys don't have any more questions. Or either I'm good walking through this boat. Um, well, we'll leave this video up. Uh, hopefully this kind of, you know, went through some questions. I know of a couple of questions that, um, that I got asked. If you would, Sarah, switch back to the main camera, and I'm going to put my phone down for a second. Um, a couple of the questions that I did get asked um, about the boat, you know, was, uh, I had one person ask about max uh, power that you could put on here. You know, it being a catamaran, it doesn't really fall under the same rules that, that some of the monohull top boats do. But what I've noticed is that anything over about three horsepower is kind of overkill for this boat. The holes are just uh, designed, you know, to, to work really well about that um, size or whatever. So the, for me, the 55-pound thrust is, is plenty. Uh, I'm getting probably in the five-mile-per-hour range. Um, with just this motor in a touch over six with my Torquedo um, or a little bit more than that, maybe. Um, so, you know, the more motor up here, but then you might have to go to a 24 volt system, which means two batteries and you're adding weight. So it can be a trade off. So that is something to think about. Um, switch back to the other camera there for me, Sarah, and uh, put that question up on the screen and I'll see if I can answer it. KBF legal. I do believe this is KBF legal, Justin. Um, that would be a question that, uh, say, Richard Penny or even uh, one of the officials there at KBF could answer. Um, but the regular blue sky was KBF legal with the pedal drive, so I don't see what the difference would be uh, with it not coming with the pedal drive. Um, so it's pretty much the same. Uh, I know the motor here that I have on here is definitely KBF legal, so I don't know of any reason that this would not be considering that the regular blue sky is KBF Uh Do we have any more questions? Oh, here we go. What colors will they be in? So that I will have to check on and I will comment back to you there, Justin. I can't remember every color it's coming in. Uh, I know it's coming in here in the forest, but I also know that there is a limited edition uh, what we're calling black glitter. I believe it's the same color there that I have in the um, actual walkthrough video. You'll see clips of kind of the pre-production boat that we played around with that glitter color, um, which is, you know, that bass boat kind of look. Uh, and I think they've got a limited amount of that plastic, and it's pretty sweet uh, looking. So if you're interested in uh, more details on that, you can just simply get in touch with customer service. Um, there's kind of a certain way you can get a hold of a limited edition one. And I'll also kind of post that in the comments as well. Uh, any more questions? There we go. What gauge wire are you running for the trolling motor? So uh, that's a good question. I ran the wire that came with the trolling motor uh, as far as it could go. And then I uh, put it together with some, I've got this pass through loose. Uh, and that probably is, I'm going to guess 12. Um, and I just tried to match the size up with some wire that I had here, which I know was 12 gauge. Um, and I just ran that back, I connected it uh, in line with some uh, waterproof butt connectors, marine grade, um, and ran it straight to the to the battery um, itself. So I do have to unhook one of the terminals to keep it from running the battery down because it does stay power on, which means the GPS is working. So I think what I might do is play around with utilizing this plug here. Um, which will shorten my wire quite a bit, but then I can just unplug it and plug it in when I want to use it. And then I can pull the whole trolling motor off the boat um, without having to do a whole lot of uh, pulling for the wires and whatnot. Um, so do we have any more questions? My wife's helping us, so that's awesome. How much does it weigh unrigged? Um, I pulled that up the other day. If you will give me a second, actually, I can find that out for you. I'm going to just look this up real quick. Guys are beating me up. I should know all these questions. Um, I know the other boat weighs in around 160 pounds, and I would imagine this is a little bit less. Um, but we're going to pull it up real quick. It won't take me but a second. 
you guys can just stare at how awesome this boat is while I'm looking it up here. Luckily, I've got good internet signal. Uh, so yeah, if you want to switch cameras, Sarah, while I'm doing that, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, we are looking here. 360 Pro. Finally got the specs pulled up. <laughs> so it's a 13, it's 140 pounds. Um, and I think that is with the seat. So 140 pounds, you save some weight there. Um, without the pedal drive, it's 13 feet, four inches long, 48 inches wide, has a capacity of 500 pounds. So we're going to go back to my screen there. All right, you can switch back if you want. Um, so Glenn, again, we had a great time fishing yesterday with Glenn. We were doing our practicing our social distancing on a on an undisclosed river and keeping a, a little of a rod length apart from each other. Um, but that allowed us to kind of get on some private water, or not private, but um, you know, not easily accessed public water, I'll say, um, and try to get some fishing in. So I had a good time with you yesterday, Glenn. Um, anyone else got any questions before we get going here? Can you pull a water skier? If you could put, I think if we could get the Torquedo, like one of their blue water, um, like 80 horsepowers on the back, and I would say you probably could for sure. <laughs> that would be entertaining. I, I would love to see um, this boat kind of progress and, and uh, you know, get better and better and, and bigger and bigger. But, you know, at some point it definitely is is not that personal watercraft anymore so you know when do you cross that line but i'll tell you what i've really enjoyed about this boat is we have some electric only lakes um around the house here and you know it is such a fishable platform to be able to get in those lakes and, and cruise around and um you know just feel like you have all the amenities of, of a bigger boat um be able to walk around land the fish from anywhere on the boat um doesn't really matter where the boat's facing i know everyone's done it over the shoulder back cast in the kayak when you're fighting for boat position. Um, and it's just really allowed you to just turn, turn your whole body and, you know, make that cast. So, um, any more questions before we close this out? What motor do you have on it now? This is the motor guide XI3. It's a 55 pound thrust motor. It is actually Jackson's kind of R and D motor, Dave. Um, and I really like it. It's, Five pound thrust feels enough to me because anything bigger than this, uh, you know, as far as having the GPS and being able to use the remote control, I would have to switch. And yes, that is my bow target that fell apart. I just noticed there's like a random deer head laying right there and like parts of a deer body. It's not a massacre, but shot target a little too much. Um, anyway, the uh, <laughs> the I feel like this is enough, you know, it pushes the boat well, it, it still you know, holds it in place just fine. And I get away with one battery and that's gonna last me pretty much all day with that one battery. I haven't really ran it down, um, except for down in Louisiana when I like literally ran the boat wide open for about nine miles just to see what it would do. Um, and I still fished all day um, with that. So if you manage it well, um, you can definitely get a full day and I've got a 27 group um, battery in the back there. Uh, so any more questions? gas motors on the stern that is a good question i have seen some people now i have tried personally putting a five horsepower because i have one in the house on the stern of this boat and i will say it is way too much power um for this boat uh it just wants to squat the holes are designed to be efficient at slower speeds when you start trying to push it past its limits uh you kind of get counterproductive However, that being said, there's a lot of guys that I've seen on the user group put like a two and a half, three horsepower motor on the back, and they seem to work fine with that. Uh, Weight-wise, it's not a whole lot different. Um, you know, you've got your, your internal gas tanks on most of those small motors. So, you know, hey, uh, if you've got something like that, I would definitely not be afraid to give that a try. I don't know if that's an official statement, um, because I do prefer to recommend electric for these, but... Uh, you buy the boat, <laughs> you can play around with it. How long are you lasting on a battery during a day of fishing? So typical day of fishing, I am not seeing this battery uh, run down. Again, I have a 27 group uh, size battery. So about the biggest I can fit in that uh, box that came on there. Uh, I fished, you know, literally all day, a couple of different times. Uh, again, I wasn't trying to like, 
go five, six, seven miles to a fishing spot, then start fishing, and then have to come back five or six, seven miles. I uh, basically have been able to launch and, and you know, fish all day, um, you know, bouncing around like, say, 140, 150 acre lake. Uh, and then when I was in Louisiana, we covered about nine miles, and I ran it wide open um, a lot of the time um, because I was just trying to get cover a lot of ground and get to my spots. And I ran it all the way wide open against the wind back. And right as I was pulling in the dock, it started to get weak enough to where I couldn't turn the motor at the same time that I was running the motor. So I would have to, like, turn it off, turn it, turn it back on. Um, but, again, I covered about nine miles that day and ran it, like, wide open the whole time. So, um, you know, that's where, like, the fact that I just happened to have a Torquedo 1003 that I pushed some of my other boats with would come in handy if I knew I was going to be covering that long distance. Um, you know, I could put that on there and, and utilize both both setups. Any other questions? Can you throw a jackhammer from it? Uh, yes, you can. That is an official. Uh, that's Glenn Young from Z-Man Baits. Um, you know, and he knows that I'm a jackhammer fanatic, but apparently the whole world is right now because you can't find them anywhere. Um, so thanks for making a bait that uh, is so good that now everyone knows about it and is buying them up. Uh, if anyone out there had the jackhammer or some jackhammers, I did come across some toilet paper, and I am willing to trade uh, one roll of toilet paper for one jackhammer. I think it's good. Any other good questions or comments? Let's see. How much does the boat cost with batteries? and trolling motor complete cost of my setup. Well, again, this is some of the R&D stuff. I know I bought a pretty nice uh, battery. It is not lithium. Um, however, the battery was about 260 bucks. So you're um, at 2,999 for the boat. Um, so I added that battery, I think it was about 260 bucks. The battery, you now you could spend $1,000 if you wanted to go lithium on this, um, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars for a really nice lithium battery. Um, as far as trolling motors, I have the uh, XI3 on there. I believe that motor comes in um, and just kind of guessing off the top of my head because I know this motor was something that R&D got picked up. So I haven't actually purchased one. I'm just kind of still in theirs uh, due to being stuck and not able to return it to the factory. <laughs> um, but I think it uh, you can get into a motor with the uh, you know iPilot or GPS style um, motor for like probably roughly... 13, 1400 bucks. Um, and then, you know, if you go to saltwater, uh, it creeps up a little bit higher than that. Uh, you could put a standard, you know, foot control cable steer motor on this boat, no problem, and save a little bit of money um, in that situation. But, you know, you get the boat um, and then you can spend as much or as little as you want uh, power in the boat. So uh, I would say just guessing um, a rough estimate on this particular setup, you know, you're probably looking at. Uh, $3,400, $3,500, um, maybe a little bit more than that with the battery. Um, so. I mean, it's not even right there. It's probably more like $3,600. What is the recommended shaft length on the trolling motor? Sarah, if you will switch to the other camera, I'm going to grab a tape measure because I really like the length of this uh, particular shaft. So I will walk in here and grab a tape measure, and I will tell you what this one is. Okay, hopefully my mic or my Bluetooth didn't mess up. But this shaft, they played around with it, like I said, again, R&D. And that's roughly like 29 and a half inches. And I'll show you, um, I really like where this is at because, it's turned. Because it still gives me plenty of foot space. Um, so it's not so much when the motor's deployed as it is, um, you know, when, uh, you're sitting in the boat that you want this floor space right here. You just want to make sure you have enough to reach the water. Where I had it set here, where I had it set here is a little bit high. It would have to be a little lower than that um, to actually uh, grab, if you will. Otherwise, it kind of cavitates. But I raised it up just so it wouldn't touch the gravel there. So now if you'll switch me back to this camera, I'll see if there's any more comments here. So that was the recommended shaft link. Again, 29, 30 inches, somewhere in there seems about right. Is that a special stand? 
for it to keep level. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it's uh, an Orion cooler. So it works well for me. I usually just uh, put one in the back. Um, we have looked into, you could actually, if you had an extra set of wheels, you could just pop this off and, you know, plug plug some wheels in there. Um, but no, right now I've just got a cooler underneath there. Dave says, will the Torquedo motor mount the same as on the other Blue Sky? Yes, nothing back here has really changed. Uh, it's the same frame. Um, and then, like I said, this is just put on with push pins. I even had one of these guys um, this mount on my old boat. I just had to drill holes where this one actually is going to come with the holes in the frame um, to be able to slide that in with just the push pins. But I just drilled a hole all the way through and bolted it on my other boat. Um, so you can mount the uh, 1003 back there, the travel motor, 1103 travel motor, or if you pull that off and want to mount the, the plate from Innovative Sportsman, um, then you can just mount that, that style motor on there, the ultralight. So if that answers your question, Dave. Did y'all change the shaft size on the motor in your R&D? Yes, we did. And um, I know a couple people have done that. In fact, I don't know if Drew Gregory um, will see this, but I know he shortened his. Um, I am not sure because I personally haven't done it yet. Uh, we're all involved in that. But I, I, I'm sure there are some videos out um, on YouTube that could help you through that process. And I can also... Uh, see if we can't if we do another one or if I can find out exactly how complicated it was I don't think it was the easiest thing in the world but um, it's not I don't think super complicated um, to shorten but yeah it was shortened in the R&D where are you going to mount your depth finder transducer so that is a good question I've actually been playing with that um, I like having the finder close to the seat and even on the seat at some point so sometimes I have actually mounted it uh, utilizing this track, which to do that, you have to take one of the bolts out, then you can slide your mount in and have it come up right beside of your seat, which is nice. But I'll tell you, I, I stand up so much on this boat. I think what I'm going to do is uh, have it mounted here. Um, and that way I can utilize one of these power points and just have it uh, to where I can look straight down like you would on the bow of a bass boat and, and read it. Uh, as far as transducers go, I am playing around with a couple of ideas. On one of my boats, I actually utilized uh, this mount here and just had it kind of fold down off the back so that it was in the water and then I could fold it up and down. Um, but I've been looking at a way to um, kind of sandwich it or mount it to this skeg uh, so that if I wanted to raise the transducer out of the water, I could just simply turn around and raise that skeg out of the water. Um, you know, it's going to create a little bit of drag doing that, uh, but that is an idea that I'm trying to play around with so for me it'll either be behind one of the pontoons just because it creates you know little to no drag uh when it's there or i'm going to play around with putting it on that skeg um, so still lots of ways to do that you could also just have one of the uh, sling blade arms from yak attack or one of the other mounts that's out there that you can um just kind of fold it over the side of the boat and you put it back in that'd be super easy because you wouldn't have to run the transducer cables you could just you know, have them mounted up in the box or whatever. But having the power points up front and doing so much standing on the boat, I kind of like the idea of having them screen where I can read it right there. Any more questions? Getting the wave from my wife that that's about it. If you'll switch me to the other camera there. We'll keep an eye on this video and if we any questions for people that maybe didn't get to join in the live cast we'll try to answer those i'm going to go back through and any of the questions that I, I feel like i could you know add a link or try to find out the answer for you uh like for example if i can find a link to a, a good video on um how to shorten the shaft on the motor guide here or any troller motor i'll post that up in the comments to save you guys some time um and i'll continue to try to answer the questions but what i would love to say about it is if you haven't tried one of the blue skies whether it's the 360 angler or the pro um, definitely uh, try one when you get a chance. I know right now everybody's kind of locked down, but it's such an awesome platform. Uh, I've had several people get on this boat that, you know, love kayak fishing or maybe haven't got into kayak fishing because they just felt like it wasn't stable enough or there wasn't enough room. Um, but this, you just, you feel like you're still standing on the dock. I mean, you can land a fish literally both feet all the way on one side on one pontoon. You're not going to uh, roll it. Um, it's just super stable and super, you know, just easy to, to fish from. And 
you know, I've always been a big advocate of keeping it simple. And that's what I like about this boat is all the wiring's clean. Everything's simple. It's easy to access. Um, and you can just do as much uh, or as little as you want. And for me, you know, just having the motor on the bow for the lakes around here gets me across those they're like 140 acre lakes, a couple of them. Um, I'm able to cross those and fish all day um, and still have enough battery to do it again another day. So um, super awesome setup. Um, you can really dial it in and make it yours, but you don't have to pay for that pedal drive. You can apply that money towards the motor if that's the direction that you plan on heading anyway. So if there's any more questions before we go, I'll get the nod from my wife. She says no. Um, thank you guys for joining us. And we'll leave this uh, posted up on the YouTube channel. Um, it'll live on the Facebook channel as well. Again, comment in either place or you can hit me up, Jameson Redding on Facebook or Instagram. Shoot me a message if you have a, a question related to this or, or the any of the Jackson products uh, as far as the fishing stuff goes. And guys, again, hope you guys stay safe, uh, stay positive, stay healthy through all this um, you know, mess we've got going on out in the world today. And hopefully we'll be able to get out and enjoy this beautiful weather very soon. My wife is doing something. Oh, yeah, it's Easter tomorrow. So, yeah, I'm glad she said that. Um, so happy Easter. Yeah, enjoy um, Easter there. And, uh, again, thank you guys for watching. If you would end the broadcast there for me in the top right-hand corner. You got to hit the button.